Hey, it's Tommy Gunn from Cracked Rabbit Gaming, and RPG Maker MV is out, and I'm going to tell you all about it, all the new features, uh, stuff they changed, stuff they actually removed, um, some bugs they have. And this is kind of a follow-up to my XP versus Ace video, although I'm not really going to be comparing this much to XP. Uh, this is more of an upgrade to Ace, so if there were things you liked about XP, you might still prefer it, although MV has some really incredible features that really make it worth it. Um, First of all, feel free to watch this video at a higher speed if you want me to talk faster. So let's get into it. Um, so here are the big new features. Higher res, uh, any res. So the tiles have actually been upscaled or they've been increased to 48 pixels by 48 pixels instead of 32 pixels. And all the art that comes with it has of course been completely redone to match that. Now, there is a problem with this, uh, which I will get into later, just with using old assets with it. But um, all the stuff that comes with it looks great, of course. And then it also plays at any resolution. You can change it, which you could do with Ace. You could change the resolution, but the highest you could go was 640 by 480. Now you can put it at whatever you want. So you can do 720p, 1080p, um, you know, which are both widescreen, or whatever you want. So it actually matches computer resolution a lot better. Uh, so there aren't going to be as many problems that we had. So let me just jump over to it. So this is just a little test project I made with um, just this, you know, I was just playing around with this. Nothing special going on here. Um, but if I play test this, and I'm using a plugin to skip the title screen, so it just goes straight to it. So uh, this video that I'm recording is recording at 720p, and I set the resolution of this game also to 720p. So, as you can see, it fills up most of the screen, and uh, it looks, you know, sharper. It has more detail anyway. Um, I know some people like the really pixelated look, but um, anyway, so that's what it looks like. Uh, now you can export to Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and HTML5. Now this is huge. Um, HTML5 means you can actually export your game and put it on a server and people can just go to that website and play it directly. They don't have to download anything, they can just play it immediately. And it has mouse support, um, which is another, uh, another thing on this list. Um, but yeah, you can, you can export it to Mac, you can export to iOS and Android. Uh, that takes a bit more work and, you know, it's not like you just click a button and you can put it on the App Store on iOS or something. There's more to it, but uh, it's possible, uh, which, you know, it was a lot more work with Ace. I mean, that you had to do, I don't know what you even had to do to get it on iOS, but there was a whole lot of other stuff. But now it's, it's much simpler. Um, but anyway, uh, JavaScript instead of Ruby. So the coding language has changed to JavaScript because of HTML5. And that's you know good or bad, but um, JavaScript is much more popular. So there are a lot more people writing plugins for MV um, now than probably were doing it for Ace, or at least a lot more people who can write them and more, you know, probably more help if you write your own. There's more tutorials online about JavaScript and more people who can help you out. Uh, RMMV uh, runs on Mac. So I think this is the first time ever for RPG Maker that it actually runs on Mac. The program itself runs on Mac. And so that's great news for Mac users. Now you can use this one when you didn't really have a choice before. Um, you just, you know, you had to emulate Windows or something if you had a Mac. Um, MV is faster, uses CPU and GPU, OpenGL for shaders. Character generator. So I will demonstrate this. Um, the character generator, and also, as I said, it has visual parts. So um, as you can see now, when we select these options, it actually shows you uh, what the hair looks like. Whereas, I'll jump over to Ace here. If you look at the character generator here, you just had to choose uh, just from type one, type seven, you know, uh, so you didn't see what it looks like until you actually tried it and also didn't look very good. Uh, these face, these faces that faced forward, everybody hated them. At least I did. I know a lot of people did. Um, so it's just not a very good character generator. 
Um, but here, and also you can see these are these side view battles, uh, battlers, which I'll get to in a minute also. Um, you can change the color of everything over here. Uh, it's just a really nice editor, and it is possible to add more parts. Um, it's not exactly easy, but uh, it is possible, and people have already created some stuff. People have created a, a new hair color um, gradient file, so you can swap that in. Um, so if you don't want all these crazy like pink hair and stuff, and you just want natural hair color, someone made a gradient that just has all natural hair colors, so blonde, brunette, you know, all that stuff, um, and different shades. And so there aren't, um, you know, some people complain that there aren't a ton of parts in here and, you know, yeah, there's one tail and stuff like that, but, um, but the characters are really cool and you can randomize it and get some pretty interesting characters here. So that's that. Um, oh yeah, I should show you that import. Um, so, when you want to export your character, uh, you can click like face image, and as you can see, like it just has the one image here, but if you click import, you can pull in another file that you had, and then, uh, you know, it would show your previous characters here, and then you can just click to where you want your second character, uh, or your, you know, your new character to be. So you can fill up this whole sheet with characters. Um, and you have to click import first. And same thing with like the walking character. You can do that here too. You can import a previous sheet. So you can add, you know, so you can have eight characters on one sheet. Mouse and touch support. Uh, so if I go here, as you can see, um, it has mouse support. I can click and the character will run over there and I can talk to people and um, so it has pathfinding and everything built in. Um, and of course, they had to do this because in order to put it on iOS, you have to be able to touch <laughs> touch the screen. So it was either that or put a virtual controller on the screen, and that's annoying. Um, so that's great, because before in Ace or anything else, you would have to have some script that did pathfinding, but now it's built in. And then there are some other plugins that people have written to make pathfinding faster, and um, so you can use pathfinding in move routes and stuff like that. Okay, three layer mapping. This is sort of in quotation marks. Uh, it's not It's not what you would hope for if you love XP and you love the three layers there where you actually get to choose your three layers. Um, it is uh, sort of an automatic three layers. <laughs> so, um, so you'll see the icons are actually, or the tiles are actually small um, on display here, but they're bigger when you actually put them down. So now, if I put two like that, see they actually overlap each other, um, whereas before they, they, you could only have one. So if you wanted to put something on a table, you know, you'd have to use an event or something. And now you can actually just do this. So you can only have two things on this, you know, this layer, this upper layer. Um, and then, you know, as you saw, like stuff disappears. And if you want to erase them, then you can just click on this one up here to uh, just put a blank thing there. Um, but so the nice thing there is that if I want to do something like this with plants, for instance, I can put multiple plants down like this and they'll all overlap each other. And uh, before, you know, they you'd, you'd have to actually have a second tile that looked like the overlapping part. Um, if you remember Ace, uh, actually I can just jump over there if I have an example here. Um, yeah, so like this this thing here, uh, you had to have tiles that looked like the overlapping trees, um, or like this one here is a good example. So that was like the two trees overlapping. But now you can just do it, you don't need extra tiles. So that is a big deal. And let me just erase those. Side view battle option built in, as you, uh, as you saw. Um, but if I jump over here into the settings and go to the system tab, um, there's just this option here, use side view battle. So that is brand new. You can finally have just the, the built-in side view battle. You don't need a, a, an extra script or plugin for it. 
And I can show you what a battle looks like too. I'll just grab some items here. And of course in this game I only have my one character. And this is a character that I generated with the generator. Um, so now if you watch the character, she actually has a sword and she swings the sword. So it's actually animated and they have different, um, different weapons. They're, uh, you know, there's like a crossbow and stuff and, and you can swap those out for other things. So if you want them to be guns, uh, you know, like someone made a whole set of machine guns and, you know, automatic weapons that you can put in if that's the type of game you want. Um, so that is very cool. Regions can be painted and filled. Um, that, whoops, that is actually very cool. Um, so you'll see that the regions uh, in Ace, there was this regions button right here. And then if you selected that, you could not select uh, like the fill, the, you know, whatever it's called, flood tool, um, flood fill, or the rectangle, you just have to put them in one square at a time. But in MV, this actually is, they moved the regions over here, and, you know, they didn't need to, but whatever. Um, and now you can actually use any of these tools. So I can actually draw a circle region um, if I want to. And, you know, regions are made to be used for battles, but there are a lot of other things you can use them for. You can, uh, one plugin that I love is the one that lets you block events from walking on certain regions, or you can block the player from wa walking on certain regions. And so that's great for parallax mapping. And also just, it's great in general for, for enemies actually, or events. So you'll see on this outside map that I made, I, this is the color that I use to block events from walking on it. So they actually can't block the door. So it's much easier for you to get in the door. If you have like a lot of events running around randomly, they could get in your way and block certain things. So you can block that off with the regions. And now it's so much easier because I can just paint this whole line uh, or this whole block, you know, or whatever. And I could fill it if I wanted to, stuff like that. Um, plugins. So now, plugins, uh, instead of scripts, there's actually a plugins button here. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of plugins on here already. And now you can also, uh, it doesn't really matter where I go here, but um, on this last tab, so in Ace, you just have the script command, and then you just have to type in something there or you know, you'd have to use note boxes or something, but now you actually have plugin commands and different plugins have different commands that they've made. Um, and so for instance, here is a plugin that I made, uh, which is not released yet, but I will make a video on it when it is released. Um, so for one thing, um, plugins are now just JavaScript files. So if I go over here in uh, this is just a whole bunch of folders I have open. Don't be alarmed by how messy this looks. Um, here, this is the project of the current project that I'm showing you, and you can see all these different JavaScript files. So you can actually just copy and paste them into this folder now, instead of in Ace, you actually had to open up the script editor, and you'd have to scroll to the bottom, and you'd have to add a new thing, and then you'd have to paste, actually paste the text right in there. So now it's so much easier because you can just download the, the plugin file and just save it right into your, copy it right into your plugin folder. And then you just add it to your plugin manager here. And now this other thing is that it has parameters. So you can actually change, change this stuff, um, change these options instead of having to open up the script and actually edit the script. Um, they can, they can put these parameters in here and then you can just like type in, you know, true, false or whatever. And it's so much nicer. And then you can also turn scripts, uh, plugins, sorry. You can turn plugins on and off. It's still so tempting to say, uh, call in scripts. Uh, and then there's a, a button for a help file for each script or plugin. Um, and another thing is you can 
highlight a whole bunch of them and you can turn them on and off at once. Uh, and there wasn't really an easy way of doing that before. You'd have to actually delete a script in Ace or comment the whole thing out or something if you wanted to disable it. It was really, it was really just bad. So this is so much nicer having all this, uh, this manager here. Here's an example of a plugin call, a plugin command. So in this is the Yanfly save event locations. So one of the commands is just reset all event locations. So you can just type that in as a plugin command and it'll reset all the events on the map. Um, and then I have similar things like that with mine where I can you can type type a thing in the plugin command. So no longer these weird, you know, code and code things in scripts. You can actually put like kind of natural sounding language into plugin commands and so that's just makes it easier to use. Okay, other additions, vocab in the editor and not scripts. So let me jump to ace again. Um, and in the scripts, you had all the, this is all the code for the actual game to run that you normally don't really want to modify. But for vocabulary, you'd actually have to go into the script and edit this stuff. And, you know, this was easy to, you know, if you accidentally deleted a quotation mark or something, you could really mess it up. And this is just, you know, kind of a little scary for some people. Like, they don't want to um, be afraid to mess things up. And so now they put in the Terms tab. And there was a terms tab in ACE, but now they have all those commands that you just saw that were in the script are all right here. And so now you can actually just edit it right here. So that's really nice. And let's see. Um, search function. That's a good one here. So now you can, this is a brand new thing, um, you can search for switches, variables, event names. So for instance, I know that I have events named person. Uh, I actually just copied it three times. And so it shows you where they are. It shows what map they're on, um, the number of the event, the position on the map. Um, unfortunately, you can't actually do anything here. You'd expect to be able to double click and, you know, at least have it switch right to that map maybe, you know, because maybe you have a hundred different maps. So it'd be nice if you could just double click on outside and it would just jump right there. Or you could double click on the event and it would jump right to that event um, or to that position or that page if it's a multi, you know, multi-page event. Um, but no, it, you can't do anything here. <laughs> it literally does not let you, you know, you can highlight it by clicking and that's it. And up here you can move, you can change the order of these, but that's it. Um, so that's uh, a miss up, missed opportunity. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that was really complicated or what, but at least it's better. Um, you know, certainly it's a step in the right direction, better than nothing. Um, but as Shaz says, it only searches for switches and variables. Uh, I would like to search for items, armors, weapons, actors, everything in the database. Yeah, would be very nice if you could do that. Um, user defined balloon icon. So here we are in an event, and here's show balloon icon. And now, as you can see, if this isn't going off the screen, um, there are these five user-defined ones. So not only do you have these regular ones, but now you have your own that you can put in. And you know you just have to edit the graphics file. And of course, you could edit these ones too. Um, so instead of music note, you could just put your own thing in there if you don't need music notes. But uh, and this is true about all of these words here, you can't edit these as far as I know. Um, so you can't actually, I mean, it's certainly, it's not in like the terms tab or something. So user defined one is always gonna be called user defined one. You, you aren't able to change that um, to, you know, explosion or wh whatever you want the, the balloon icon to be for your custom game. It's always just gonna be called one, two, three, four, five. So that's too bad. Um, but it is nice that they added some extras there can remove items from the menu. So from, let's see. So here are all these items. Um, oh, and I'll just show it to you since I'm here. There's now an options menu, so that's cool. 
Um, so this was something you, you might remember seeing this in Ace Games. Well, that was just a script that someone wrote um, to add all this stuff in, um, but it wasn't officially in here. Um, but now it is. Now there's an options menu, so that's nice. But all these things, item, skill, equip, status, um, this stuff, you can now go to the system tab here, and here they are. You can remove them from um, the actual menu, and before you just, again, you'd need a script to do it. So it's always nice when they just have stuff built in and make it easier for people. Can now pan music and sounds. Uh, you know, whatever, you can pan music left and right. Not, not a huge deal. If you are really into sound design, then you might love this. Um, so, you know. Uh, export maps and image. Now, this is, this is not as good as it sounds at the moment. So you can right click on a map, and now they have save as image, which sounds perfect for parallax mapping. You know, you need to export your map and then take it into Photoshop or whatever and work on it. Well, when you save it as an image right now, um, it's about half the size. So you can't use it for parallaxing. It's too small. And I think that someone, one of the moderators said that that was a bug and that they were going to fix it. I don't know for sure. Um, but until then, you can use a plugin to export. There's a free plugin. Um, and the, the link is in the description. There, I, wrote, I wrote an FAQ and it has links to all this stuff in the description. So check out that FAQ. Um, it has a whole lot of other information too. Edit add events while playtesting. Um, if you leave and re-enter the map. This is very cool actually. So uh, as you can see, I still have this, um, this running. And so if I talk to this person, they just say hello. So now, without shutting it down, it's still in the background, um, I can go in here and I can edit this. Hello, hi. Okay, really boring, but um, so now I will save it, of course, and then go back here. Now I will leave and re-enter and now talk to this person and look, hello, hi, now it shows up. So. I didn't actually have to completely shut down the game and, and reload it or anything. Uh, I could just leave and re-enter. And since this is the starting map, I could have just hit F5 to refresh and you know it would have instantly popped up. It would probably would have been quicker. But there are other instances where you know, you're partway through the game and you're on some other map. And this is really cool. You can just uh, change stuff on the fly. So that really speeds stuff up. Test events by right-clicking. Um, I should probably shut this down first. Um, so this is my starting map, as you can see. But if I go outside, um, well, here's just another person. So if I edit this and then right-click here, you can actually test these now. So I can test this. And so you can see I'm still on the wrong map. but the actual event that I was testing was just this text box, and that is the correct text box for the person who's outside. So, um, so that could speed things up a little bit. Okay, neutral. Uh, MP4, WebM, and AUG, and M4A audio. So they changed the formats you need for video and audio, and it sounds like more options for you to use, um, but actually you have to do both of these things. It depends on what you're going to export to, but um, you know, read the manual to see. Uh, but if you're going to export to all the different platforms, you have to do both of these for everything. So you have to put all your videos in MP4 and WebM. WebM. Um, so you know, whatever. That's just the way it is. It's just because there are different devices. So not really a plus or a minus. Um, although these formats might be better than the ones that were in Ace. Um, uh, for parallax below the player, just add the exclamation point in front of the parallax image name. So uh, I actually did that um, on this one. I should get rid of this regions. Okay, so if I open this up, you'll see I'm using a parallax background, and the image has an exclamation point. And so now um, I can, I'll just run this again. Um, so now I'm swapping over. So this is my parallax map. So you can see that it's a little bit different. I have my logo down there. And um, some of these things are now centered better. 
instead of always being like, you know, at the top or the bottom of the wall. Now they're like right in the middle and stuff. And I pushed some stuff back. Anyway, so this is now built in. So parallax mapping is built in, but only for the bottom layer. And if you're going to go to all the trouble to do parallax mapping, you probably want multiple layers, you know, so you know, do a fog layer and do a top layer so you can, uh, you know, have stuff, you know, cover up the player sometimes and stuff like that. So it's nice. It's a, you know, it's built in. So that's good. Um, not a huge deal. You're probably still going to run a plugin. Um, you know, if you're, if you're serious about, about parallax mapping, um, zoom in and out with keyboard shortcuts. Um, and you can zoom more than hundred percent. So here you can see now I can actually zoom in, uh, more than hundred percent, which I couldn't before. And then I can also zoom out and there are keyboard shortcuts for zooming, which also didn't used to be the case. Uh, in ACE, you had to use the buttons on the, the toolbar. The weird thing though, is that you'll see that it's plus and minus to zoom in and out, which sounds good, except the plus, the actual plus sign is over the equal sign. So you have to do control shift equals to zoom in. Uh, whereas in something like Photoshop, even though you think of it as plus and minus to zoom in and out, it's actually the equal sign. So you don't have to hold shift. So that's actually really dumb. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they did that. If they use different keyboards, um, maybe, you know, maybe Japanese keyboards or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so that, uh, that's a little, whatever, a little useless. I'm probably just going to have to use the, the bar there. Um, new icon style. So here we are in the items tab. Um, oh, and if, if I didn't mention it already, uh, ignore the fact that there's only four items here and that uh, my database looks really empty. Um, I'll show that at the end and talk more about that. Um, but anyway, icons. So here are the new icons. They have a brand new style. They are, of course, bigger, just like everything else um, in MV. The, you know, the dimensions have increased. Um, so, and this is a totally different style, this sort of flat, single color icon for a lot of these things. You might like them, you might not. Um, people have already converted the ACE icons over, so if you like those, you know, you can get, it's kind of a, someone made sort of a cross between this where it still has the, the background color, but then the icon uh, is the ACE icon on top of that. And someone else made it so it's, it looks just like the ACE icons. There's no background color at all, it's just the icon. So, you know, you can always swap those out. Um, just something they changed. Um, no RTP, that's the runtime package, if you are familiar with the previous ones. Um, so the runtime package, that was all the like default files. And people, you know, if you downloaded a whole lot of different Ace games, you could just install the RTP, which was all those default music files and, you know, graphics and everything. And then you could download everyone's games without the RTP, and it would just be a much smaller download for all those other ones. Um, but now there is no RTP. Like there are still default files, of course, but they're all just included. Uh, you know, you just have to put them or delete them out of your project. There's no separate RTP that people can download. And that's just, you know, uh, it's just because now you're publishing on the web and you're publishing on um, iOS and stuff like that. So they, I guess they just decided to remove it entirely because it didn't really make sense to do that for this. Um, so now you just have to make sure you're including all your files yourself. Um, okay, things they didn't change. Um, chibi characters. So I, I showed you the generator already. Um, and, you know, so they they look a lot better. I, I definitely like these characters a lot more. Um, but they still do have, like, the giant heads. Um, so some people still aren't going to like these, um, you know. The generator is really nice, so I probably will be using these characters. Um, but I really did like Mac style characters in Ace. Still only four self switches. You know, whatever. Um, some people wanted more. I don't know that I ever really needed more than four. Um, but now, there, you know, there's also someone who wrote a plugin already, so you can have unlimited self switches if you put comments in. Uh, events are still one square, 
but there is uh, some pl there are some plugins. So yeah, these events you can still only make an event as a single square. So if you want, like say a giant character, you can't have them take up four squares and allow your player to go and click on any of the four squares to talk to them or something. It's always just one square. So, you know, I think a lot of the stuff they did in, um, in MV was to keep it familiar and keep it the same to allow people to convert their projects over to MV. So they didn't want to change too much. Um, and you know, that's good and bad. There are some features that I really wish they would have put in, but uh, it would have made making games easier, but they didn't. So that's just what it is. But like I said, there are plugins that will um, sort of emulate uh, like a larger event, uh, you know, square size or whatever. So if you have an event that is like a big monster that takes up four squares or nine squares or whatever, you can have a plugin that tells it to be that many squares. And then, you know, people can, people won't be able to overlap that character as it's walking around and stuff like that. Uh, another thing you can do is you can use regions to call common events. So like, say you have, um, you know, say I want someone to click anywhere on this kitchen and it'll pop up some text. Well, I can't just put one event um, and stretch it across the whole thing. I'd have to copy the event five times or whatever, or I could use regions and just paint that whole thing a region and then use uh, the common, you have that call a common event that would display the text. No custom quick events. Um, that's too bad. A lot of people I know uh, wanted more quick events like this. Um, still just have these four, but what you can do is just have a, like sort of a blank map or, you know, just call, just <laughs> add an, add an extra map here that has all your, your events that you might want to use over and over again, like certain treasure chests or whatever, and you can customize them there. And then you can just copy and paste them wherever you need to. And that's one way around it. Um, you know, the, the quick event is nice because, you know, say you're doing treasure, you know, you can choose your item and then it would automatically put in the text for that item that you chose and stuff. But really, they're not that useful. Um, I mean, yeah, so whatever. Can't resize program windows. This is just a personal thing of mine, uh, is that, you know, you can resize the main, the main window, but like this window here, I can't make any bigger. And like an event window, I can't make that any bigger either. So I can't stretch this out. I can't stretch, you know, if I move my mouse here, it doesn't turn into an arrow. So I can't make this any bigger. And that that's a little annoying. No built-in word wrap. So that is sort of uh, <laughs> goes along with what I was just saying is that there's no built-in word wrap. So you have to use a plugin and the plugins work great. They're fine. Um, the unfortunate thing is that there's no word wrap in this box either. So I can't just type my whole paragraph in this box and I can't expand this box like I was saying. Um, and so if I want to have a whole lot of text like this kid um, is saying a whole bunch of stuff, I have to manually put line breaks in here. Otherwise it's gonna run off of the screen and I won't actually even be able to see it on here. So that's really annoying. And then if I have him still talking, uh, you know, I, I add another <laughs> box here. So actually here you can see that uh, I didn't, I didn't put another line break here. And actually I, I probably can't, I think it's limited to four. So I had to just keep typing all the way off the side. Uh, so that's really annoying. If you're, if you like to write a lot, then it gets kind of frustrating there. Removed resource manager. So if you watched my previous ACE videos, you know that I never use the resource manager anyway. Um, so I don't care about that. Uh, here, I'll jump over to ACE so you can see. So that's this thing here. Um, I, I just, whatever. Um, I always have the folders open. So like here, if I open this, um, you know, I would always just be dragging and dropping stuff between folders like this. And that's what you have to do. You have to just open your, your folder, your project up here and then open your image, you know, and then you can just have your characters and you can drag and drop stuff in there. 
and that's what I always did anyway. So it's not a, it's, it doesn't change a thing for me, <laughs> but, um, you know, I know some people liked it for some reason and I'm sure they have their reasons, but, um, yeah. So, okay. Script editor. So now in, in this, remember there's this script editor, so you could, um, modify your scripts here. Well, there's nothing like that in MV, but that's actually a good thing. It, uh, even though it's under this removed category that may, may, might sound negative, it's actually good because now you can open your plugins in any text editor you want. You can open them in, you know, whatever, Sublime Text or TextPad or whatever, Notepad++, and you can edit your plugins, you can save it, you can actually, um, and that way you don't have to leave this window open and then, you know, hit OK and then play test your game and then keep going back and forth and back and forth. You can actually edit your script in a separate program and then you can just hit refresh in your window and test it out like right away. So you can just like quickly switch between your text editor and your play test window. So it's actually much better. Um, and this really only applies, you know, to people who are writing their own plugins and things. Here's a minor one. You can no longer search the help file um, in ace the help file you could actually uh whatever you know this <laughs> this style is called you could actually type in stuff here and it would it would bring up you know your different things um but now the text file in mv is just an html file it's just a, it's just a web page basically and so you can search the text you know with with your browser but you can't do a search like I just did where it'll bring up, you know, all these different sections for you and, and tell you like where that word is found. Um, so it's a little inconvenient, but you know, I don't use the help file that much anyway. Um, slow to zoom. So now see, I have, if I want to zoom way out like this, um, a better example would be like the outside map. Um, I have to click a whole bunch of times <laughs> to get it to zoom all the way out. Whereas in Ace, um, they just had these buttons. So I could just hit one button and it would zoom all the way out and then all the way back in. Um, and that that's actually really nice uh, if you have like a huge map. Uh, and they do have the one-to-one -one button so you can get to normal size, but to zoom out, you have to click a ton of times. So that is unfortunate if you have really big maps. The max map size is smaller. Uh, you can increase it, but it's laggy on mobile. So, um, yeah, th that's basically what it says. Um, they decreased the, the maximum map size because uh, mobile can get laggy. And so you want to really be careful about how big you're making your maps. Um, but if you want to increase it, you can. You have to edit the files. And that's in the FAQ that I wrote. Um, there's a link to, or it explains how to do it in there. Um, so yeah, you know, I know there are some people again who love to have enormous maps, um, but there's a reason you don't want to have enormous maps. So um, very minor point here, you can't change the background checkerboard color. Um, so like back here, you'll see this, <laughs> this gray and white checkerboard. In Ace, you could actually choose the color of it and now you can't. Um, really minor thing that they removed, but you know, um, Drop downs no longer show item ID numbers. This is kind of a big deal, actually. And I don't know if this is a something that they're going to fix or change, or if this is really just intentional. Um, so here, I just quickly added some things here. So you'll see if I add a switch command um, to turn t number switch number one on, it does show the number of the switch, 0001, um, and the name. But then in the conditional branch, it just says test. It doesn't show the number. Um, and then here, change items, it also doesn't show the number of the item. Uh, it just says the name of it. And that might not sound like a big deal, but there are times when you're you know, writing script commands right afterwards or something or something else where you need to know the number of the item that you just used and now it doesn't just display it here so you can't just quickly look up and see what the name uh, the number is you'll have to actually open this up and even here it doesn't show it right here and it doesn't show it right here either you know these are blank so it shows the numbers there so you can't even get it from right here you'll have to actually 
go, whoops, not that one. Go in here and now here you can see the dispel herb is number three. So that I, I hope they change and I, I don't know exactly why that happened or if that was intentional or what, but um, okay, other cons. So of course, compared to previous RPG makers, um, you know, a lot of these things are always true about the newest one that comes out. It costs more, of course. Um, it's laggy for some people who have old graphics drivers, you know, probably just update your graphics driver and you'll be okay. Um, I don't think the specs are super high on this, um, but they are higher than the previous ones. So go look at the official site and you can probably find the specs there. Um, so old tiles and characters need to be upscaled. So this is a big deal if you have a lot of previous resource packs that you've bought um, or graphics that you've made yourself. Um, the weird thing is that the new graphics are 1.5 times the size. So they're not an even number, like two times the size, which would have been nice because then you could upscale your graphics and just make them double and everything would be okay. You know, they, they wouldn't look as good as, you know, the, the brand new graphics that are made to be double the size. Um, but they would look the same as your old graphics were, you know? Um, but now they're, it's 1.5 times. So it's this weird number. So if you're scaling it, you know, if you know about graphics algorithms and stuff, it just doesn't scale properly. Uh, it just, there's no way because it's splitting pixels and stuff. Um, so you can't simply increase your, I mean, you can do it, but they're going to look bad. Uh, so you have to do it some other way. So here is, um, this is called MVFU, MVFU. Um, this is just a, I mean, this is just a screenshot of what the output looks like, but it'll, it's a, it's a website that's one of the, the fans made, um, on the forum and you just go there and you can upload your images and it will upscale them for you. And it'll use better algorithms to try to smooth out the lines. Um, and then, and as it upscales it. And then also it removes like seams because normally if you, um, it, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> if you really want to read about it, you can go read on the forum. Um, but like if you just upscale using these algorithms, you'll get seams in between the tiles and stuff. So his, his program that he made on his server, it tries to get rid of those seams and it does a pretty good job. Um, and he's adding to it all the time. So check that out. Um, blurry text. Some people complain about this. Uh, it does, you know, if you look over here on the left side, uh, and I don't know if you can really tell from this video, but the text has a lot of anti-aliasing on it, and some people find that looks really blurry to them. Um, I think it looks okay. Um, it does, it does look softer than Ace did. Um, that you can see the text here has very little anti-aliasing on it, so it looks a lot sharper. Um, you know, whatever, it's a personal preference. Not as many scripts and plugins. Of course, you know, because this is so new, of course it doesn't have as many as these other RPG makers that have been out for years, um, but there are a whole lot of plugins already that people have made, and there's more all the time, of course. Um, this has only been out as of this recording, it's been out for three and a half weeks and there's already a ton of stuff. So not really something you need to worry about, but if there was something, uh, some script that you used in a previous one that you really loved, you know, there were some that I really loved in Ace and they haven't been ported over yet. So, uh, that could take some time. Um, and now this just to give you a, a second opinion to see what other people think, Yanfly, if you know, Yanfly writes a whole lot of scripts and plugins and actually um, a whole lot of the ones that come with RPG Maker MV were written by Yanfly. So this is what he or she has to say about uh, MV. Uh, some of this we already went over. No hidden classes, this removes so many barriers. That just means like the code um, behind the scenes is not hidden. You can you can read all of it, so you can easily create your own plugins and know exactly how to change things. And this matters to plugin uh, coders, you know. But uh, if you don't write your own plugins, then it, it doesn't matter. Um, Ruby to JavaScript means we get access to powerful JavaScript libraries. JavaScript version eight is one of the fastest performing languages out there. 
Um, console window allows for Wondrous debugging. Yeah, I didn't show that, but um, when you're play testing, you can also bring up a console window that will show you some additional information. Just like if you're um, editing a web page, you can you know view what's going on. Um, same thing here. Um, creating projects, uh, event note boxes. Yeah. Um, if I open up an event here, now there's actually this note box which did not exist in ACE. There were note boxes for other things like items or whatever, um, but not for an actual just event, but now there is. So that could help out a lot for certain plugins. Um, equipment slot typing, I don't actually know what that means. Um, <laughs> so I'll just skip that one. Fantasy and sci-fi sets included by default. Yeah, there are um, these other tile sets. So here's the uh, sci-fi outside, all this stuff, and sci-fi inside. Little to no more event large map lag. Yeah, I, uh, I guess I didn't really run out here, but um, <laughs> if I run outside here, you'll see that I have a ton of events going. And actually, if I hit F2, I can bring up frames per second, which uh, is only around 40 right now. That might just be because I'm recording a video at the same time. Uh, normally, if, if I'm not recording a video, it's locked basically at 60. Sometimes it dips. I'm not really sure why. Um, but yeah, you, you can see even with this 40 frames per second, it's still tons of events are running around. And uh, it's yeah, you don't really notice lag here. Um, so that is really great because before you had to really worry about it. And if you are going to export to mobile, you do have to worry about this, um, about how many events you're doing. Make sure to test on mobile because uh, it's easy for that to get out of hand. So I'll just run back inside. Options menu include by default. Yeah, I already went over that. Um, so yeah, those are the huge new features. Um, now let me talk about some differences in the event. So here are some uh, screenshots I took just to quickly show you the differences in events. So on the left, we have all um, ACE, and then on the right, it's MV. So here's select key item. And now, instead of select key item, it's just called select item. And it works exactly the same way as key items, where you choose a variable. But now, you can actually select regular items, or key items, or hidden A or B. And that's just what it sounds like, hidden items just are not shown to the player and um, and they only are shown if you use this command. And I will do a separate video on these new you know key items for MV. But if you don't know how key items work in general, you can go watch my ACE tutorial on key items and that'll explain the basic concept of it. But now we have regular items and hidden items. So that's, that's nice. Um, there are a lot of things you could do with hidden items like make an achievement system or something. Um, show choices. Show choices in ACE, you were limited to four, and then there wasn't much to choose from on this side. Now you can do six, and you can actually change your background, you can change the window position, and then you can, uh, yeah, this is still the same, or at least uh, the cancel is still the same, but now you can choose the default instead of the default being number one. I think was it was always number one. Um, or maybe there was no default. Anyway, um, and if you want to do a branch, like uh, in this one, you know, you just do it the same way. You just make number six the branch um, to add, and then just add another show choices below that. So you can, you know, infinitely chain these if you want to. Um, so here we are, just some other minor changes. Now there's change TP as an option, which didn't exist in ACE, and change profile. So change profile, that's just the text description of the different players. Um, so now you can actually change the profile. Um, so maybe if your character upgrades or something, then uh, you know the profile will, will change appropriately or whatever you want. Uh, here's some more, um, just minor, minor changes. Um, back in Ace, we had change battle end music. Um, now it's split between victory and defeat. So now you can have different music um, depending on if you win or lose. And change vehicle background music, so that's brand new. And change enemy TP. 
here's conditional branch. So this is um, really just uh, the text change that they did. They, they did some minor things like this where, you know, before in ACE, it was called set handling when conditions do not apply. Now in MV, they actually called it what it is, create else branch. And so that's nice because now uh, it's just, you know, it's like in ACE, they were trying not to use code words, <laughs> you know, words that, that sounded like code and because uh, it was supposed to be no code coding required. But uh, that just kind of makes it confusing. Like, what does that really mean? You know, um, it's like, you know, you really, you have to learn the basics of coding to use this anyway. So you might as well just call it an else branch. So now it's called an else branch. And if you look here, here's what it looks like, which I showed before, but, um, you know, yeah. So, uh, and interestingly, they've always been kind of inconsistent. Like over here, they have the double uh, equals sign. And that's what you'd use in code is you use double equal sign um, for things, uh, you know, for an if statement. And, uh, but they wouldn't say if they called a conditional branch and now they just changed it to the <laughs> what's clearer for most people who know anything about coding so now it's actually if else and end um but then they <laughs> then they changed the, the equal signs to is so whatever i don't know they're they're kind of strange like that but bugs so uh you know like i said uh before this has been out for three and a half weeks and i wanted to wait a bit before I made this video just to make sure that I got all the information about bugs that were in there and they had a chance to fix things and you know, I didn't want to release a video on the first day because of course stuff isn't known yet. Um, and I, you know, I think most stuff has been, most of the bugs have been found now. Uh, there, there was a bug with animated tiles and they fixed that in the first week. There's, uh, you know, version 1.01 .01 or something like that of, of MV you can download and that fixes that bug. So not something you have to worry about. Just make sure you're using the newest one. Um, parallaxing had a problem. And actually, like, a lot of people uh, created threads about this on the forum, but they never got answered. And so then finally, I, I bumped one of the threads and asked, like, what's going on with this? Like, and I posted an image showing the problem. And then one of the, the moderators or the administrator uh, actually like stepped in and and looked into it and had someone uh, test it and write a plugin for it. So they fixed it. <laughs> so um, so what was happening was that you'll see that this is a parallax map in the editor. So you can and this is double size. So you can see this is pretty crisp. You know, you can see the pixels. They're not blurry. They're um, pretty sharp here. But then once you actually play test, they would get really blurry like this. And I don't know how easy it is to see on this video if I move this up a little bit. So see, you can see the character here is very sharp, but the background is blurry. And so that was just, that was a bug. Um, and you can read about that on the forum if you want to know exactly why, but just get the plugin. It fixes that and then you're fine. I think there was a star passability thing. That was, uh, I think they released the plugin for that with MV or you know on day one or whatever. So you might need that. Um, then save map image that I already talked about um, that, you know, hasn't been resolved. I don't know what's going on with that, but there's a plugin to fix it. So not a big deal. Okay. So full database. Here is a completely brand new project that I started um, in MV, but then I copied the, the full database into it. So what they did is if you saw my, the other project that I was showing you, it only had like four, you know, four items or whatever, um, and very, very few things. So what they did was they, they did that intentionally because some people just didn't like having this really cluttered database full of stuff. Um, so they released the database as a separate file. So you actually have to, which is a little weird because it's hard to find, um, but it's in the FAQ that I wrote. Uh, there's a link to it. And that just has all these JSON files and you can just copy them. You know, here's, you know, your project and go to your project and go to your data. And then you can just copy whichever ones in you want. You know, um, you don't have to copy all of them. If you just want skills or something, you can copy those in. Uh, just make sure, you know, you're careful that you didn't create new stuff in your file because that'll be overwritten, of course, if you're copying these over them. Um, but 
So let me open up this project. So this is the one with the full database and you'll see there's still not a whole lot there, but then here, now there's a whole lot of skills here and a bunch of 16 items, a bunch of weapons. So you can see there's all this extra info in here. So if you want the full database, it does exist. They, they have it. Don't freak out uh, if you start a new project and it doesn't have much. And also if you're the type of person who starts a lot of new projects and you want those files in everything. Um, so here is where I have RPG, RPG Maker MV installed. This is the actual install file uh, or folder. And there's this folder called new data. And so the new data folder has everything that will get uh, tra copied into your new projects by default. So anything you put in here will get copied into all your new projects, um, anything after that point. So if there are tile sets you want, you can copy your tile sets into here, and then those will get added to every new project you make or plugins. You know, you can put plugins in your JavaScript folder here, um, audio, anything you want that will get copied into your new thing. So same thing with all this data, uh, all the data here, you can put them into the data folder and then you'll have a full database on all your new projects if that's what you want. So it's not a big deal, but it is a little confusing for people starting out. So that's about it. Uh, I know I didn't show you all these tabs here, but that's just because it's really pretty much the same as ACE. I mean, there might be some other little differences that I didn't notice. Um, you know, I didn't like go through every single thing <laughs> checking it between ACE and, and here, but um, you know, it basically is the same thing. So nothing should really surprise you too much there. Uh, and then here, if you want to see some sample maps, um, these are just some maps that are included and there are a whole lot of sample maps here if I and you can also generate a dungeon just like before so if you go to load you'll see there's all these different maps you can load a whole lot of them so don't worry about that they're still here And I think that's about it. Uh, I know this is a long video. I hope you watched it at a higher speed and uh, I hope it was helpful. Um, definitely check my FAQ because I go into a lot more stuff. Uh, you know, every, every little thing you might be curious about with MV, I probably answered there and I'm always adding more to it. So check that out and uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Oh, and um, I will be doing new tutorials for MV. Uh, it'll be a brand new playlist with just my MV tutorials, but keep in mind that all my ACE tutorials are still completely relevant. Um, you know, they're just minor, minor changes as you saw, um, but all the eventing is the same pretty much, except for, you know, like the, the, the key items changing to select items and stuff like that. Um, but all those tutorials will still completely help you out um, if you are unfamiliar with RPG Maker in general. Um, but there will be new stuff, so look for that. Thanks.